Again, guys, these are five kind of snack options that I'll use. Now, I'm not going into macros and calories too much in this video, but obviously you wanna make sure that the amount of these foods that you consume is in line with your goals. <laughs> Hey guys, Dr. Will here. We have a special episode with you. We are in the kitchen with Dr. Will. So this is a three-part series. I'm gonna show you guys some excellent snack options. I'm gonna show you guys some breakfast options and I'm gonna show you guys some sort of lunch and dinner options. Um, I get asked a lot about nutrition from patients and I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a dietitian, but obviously I'm somebody that helps people with their health. And so particularly, you know, patients that are dealing with, you know, different health issues and orthopedic issues, the nutrition that you're putting in your body can make a big difference as far as how well you heal and how your body responds to therapy. So I always do talk to patients about nutrition and about hydration. So I just want to share with all you guys some of the things that, uh, some of the information my patients are privy to, but maybe not everyone in my audience uh, has access to my office. Um, but you're curious about nutrition and maybe some of the things that I do and the things that I recommend. So as you can see, we have a nice uh, spread of snacks here. And I'm gonna start on the left side here. Now there's a lot of different types of protein bars out there. And I'll tell you right now, if you're somebody that is uh, trying to lose weight, lose body fat, the Gatorade bar is probably not the best bar for you. This is a very high calorie protein bar, meaning that there's, you can see there's 13 grams of fat, 40 grams of carbs, and you got protein in there as well, right? So this is a very high calorie protein bar. However, if you're someone like me and you're extremely physically active and you are somebody that exercises a lot and you have an active job and it's hard for you to get a lot of calories in throughout the day, this is a very quickly digesting bar that you can eat throughout the day. Um, there's other things like the Cliff Builder bar, which is pretty good. There's the Rise bar. Um, everybody gets to make their own decision as to how clean they want their protein bars to be. Of course, there's huge variations in cleanliness of the protein bar. For me personally, based on my goals and my lifestyle, I, I like the Gatorade bar because it's high calorie and it, it's satiating and it fills me up. Sometimes the smaller low calorie protein bars uh, just don't have enough substance in them. So the first snack that I recommend is going to be that you find a protein bar that you enjoy and that the caloric content of the protein bar actually fits with your goals. Um, you'll see most protein bars in the States have 20 grams of protein or so. Uh, so you wanna look for a bar that has at least 20 grams of protein. Um, a, you know, for example, a granola bar that says, you know, Kirkland bar with protein, but then you look and there's only five, seven, eight grams of protein. Um, that's not gonna be a good use of calories because that's gonna be probably a little bit heavier with fat and a little heavier with carbs. So for you to get your protein in during the day, protein bar is very, very good. Another snack option that I personally use a lot and I recommend to patients all the time is this awesome brand called Fuel for Fire, okay? So uh, this to me is a lot like uh, baby food for adults. And I know some adults even use baby food for, for this option, right? It's an extremely fast, quickly digesting carbohydrate and protein supplement that has whole foods in it. So this one specifically is sweet potato and apple. So I'll tell you how I use a fuel for fire and how I recommend it to patients. I have a lot of patients and a lot of clients that I program training for that are often going straight from work to the gym, okay? And usually, you know, during a typical work day, some will have breakfast at seven or eight in the morning, they'll go to work, they'll have lunch at noon, and their work day ends at five. And then they have a 30, you know, we're in Miami, so everyone's got a commute, right? 30, 45 minute commute uh, to the gym. Now, to me, I'm always trying to get my clients, whether your goal is weight gain, weight loss, uh, you know, lose fat, gain muscle, whatever the goal is, I want a lot of those calories to be around the training window, right? Meaning that I want you to be getting calories in on your way to the gym, an hour before the gym, and I want you to get a lot of calories in after the gym, right? That way you're gonna make best use of those calories. Those calories are gonna go towards building muscle and recovering your body. Whereas calories that you're eating, you know, first thing in the morning, a super high calorie meal or late at night, a high calorie meal, those calories are more likely to be stored as fat and may not contribute to the type of physique that you want. So I'll often have a patient have a fuel for fire on their way to the gym. 30 minutes before the gym, 
throw this thing down, you get a little bit of protein, you get a little bit of carbohydrates, you get some fruit and some whole food in there. It uses whey protein, so it's really, really good, and they're super tasty. So there's a couple of very variations out there. Uh, the grocery store sells, you know, baby food type items, these squeezable kind of juice things. The only thing I would be cautious of is the ones that are sort of yogurt based um, because dairy right before the gym um, may not be the best option, particularly depending on how you digest dairy. Most people feel a little bit heavy and bloated with dairy, even if they're not lactose intolerant. Um, so that's not the best thing to have right before the gym. You want something quick, it's gonna give you a little boost of energy, and then this is gonna be used by your body to fuel your workout. So number three, everybody loves Fairlife, right? Fairlife is, to me, it's, it's like sort of the best protein shake option that I found. This is the Fairlife Core Power High Protein Shake. You can see there's 26, 26 grams of protein in this and only 170 calories, which means more than half the calories are coming from protein. You have a little bit of carbohydrates and a little bit of fat, um, but this is basically sort of a, a milk-based protein product. Um, and again, if you're, if you're lactose intolerant, this may not be the best option. However, I have found that uh, even for myself, I don't always digest uh, milk particularly well. Like I'm not a milk drinker, but the Fairlife shakes digest extremely well. Um, I could have one of these in the morning. I could have one of these an hour and a half before I work out, right after the workout in the middle of the workday. And again, it's something you can throw down really quick and it's high in protein, right? So if your goal is to have sustainable energy and to stay lean, uh, not have something too heavy, this is a really, really good option. Uh, Gatorade, Gatorade makes their own protein shakes. Again, those Gatorade products are typically geared towards um, athletes, athletes that are training a lot throughout the day. So if you do have a physically active job or you're a high level athlete and you're training multiple times a day, the Gatorade option might be better for you. Uh, there's vegan protein shakes that are based with pea protein and hemp protein. Um, if, that's a, if, if you're on a vegan diet or you prefer veg uh, vegetable-based proteins, those are also really good options. Um, but for me, the, the Core Power Fairlife shakes are really good. They also make shakes with 42 grams of protein. Uh, so for me, if I'm going to make a smoothie or do something post-workout because I'm over 200 pounds, uh, the 40 gram of protein option is good for me because I'm usually looking to get 180 to 200. So again, another super quick and easy option uh, for a snack to have throughout the day, uh, particularly if you're an active person and you're trying to gain muscle, throw one of these down at you know, two in the afternoon and that way you're just getting that constant influx of protein. Number four is going to be rice cakes. And for some reason, rice cakes like went out of style because uh, back when I was younger and I was looking up to you know, bodybuilders and fitness influencers and athletes, like everyone had like gallon of water and a bag of rice cakes with them. That was like the bodybuilder thing. Um, but rice cakes are still an excellent, excellent option um, to, to get some calories throughout the day and to get some carbohydrates, right? So you can see here, 90 calories per rice cake and it's basically all from carbohydrates with a very low sugar content, right? So these are just pure carbohydrates. Um, so if you're somebody, again, if you're trying to gain weight or lose weight, just control the portion size, right? If you're trying to lose weight, have one rice cake with, with the topping. If you're trying to gain weight, have three rice cakes with the topping. Uh, the other great thing about rice cakes is they're very easily digestible, and you can you know you can check the sweet or savory box, right? You can take a rice cake like this. You can put a little bit of almond butter, some strawberries, some dark chocolate chips, some chia seeds, pistachios on top of the rice cake, and make it more of a sweet option. Or you can take uh, you know you can take a rice cake and you can you know you can make it into a, a more savory option, right? You can, use a whole grain rice cake, barbecue sauce on it, you can put a little bit of turkey, cheese on it, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you want, uh, but they're super versatile. So rice cakes are something that I'll use a lot and I recommend a lot. Again, I'm on the move all the time. At my job, I'm usually seeing patients back to back, oftentimes with no uh, structured break throughout the day. Um, and then I also teach, so I'm driving to my class, I'm teaching my class, I'm in a lab, I'm in a classroom, and I just need to get lots of calories in quickly because I don't want to overload my evening with calories and affect my sleep negatively. So I wanna make sure that I'm getting good calories. Um, nut butters, of course, are another great option. And this will oftentimes go on top of the rice cake. Back in the day, I used to just do a, a spoonful of almond butter and just eat that. Um, but nut butters are another really good option. They're, they're fairly healthy. 
Uh, they are calorically dense, meaning that you don't want to, you know, crush an entire tub of almond butter. Um, but a scoop of almond butter will be very satiating because it's high in fat, um, high in protein, and it's going to provide you a really clean source of calories. Again, that is satiating, which is key. Um, the other thing that's satiating would be a giant uh, bowl of vegetables. But it's not always practical if you're a professor giant bowl of vegetables. It's much easier to eat a scoop of almond butter and put it on top of a rice cake. And that's going to keep you full for a couple of hours. So it's going to decrease cravings. So when there's uh, donuts and other things like that in the break room, you say no thanks, have a cup of coffee, have your water, and then move on with your day and meet your goals. The last one is going to be eggs. Now eggs are a super easy option. We're also going to talk about how to use them as like a breakfast option. But you can just boil eggs. You can hard boil eggs. You can a little bit of salt on them, a little bit of mustard, a little topping, and you can have a couple of eggs. To eat two or three hard boiled eggs is going to take you a minute, minute and a half, um, and you're going to get a good source of protein and a good source of fat, so they're going to be very satiating, right? Uh, not a lot of sugar, not a lot of uh, you know, other unhealthy processed things. It's, it's just an egg, so it's a great way to get calories and keep yourself satiated. So again, guys, these are five kind of snack options that I'll use. Now, I'm not going into macros and calories too much in this video, but obviously you want to make sure that the amount of these foods that you consume is in line with your goals, right? So if your goal is to lose weight, we're not going to be crushing four Gatorade protein bars per day. Maybe we'll pick a lower calorie protein bar. Uh, but again, even if your goal is to lose weight, snacking is actually a good thing, right? Snacking uh, intelligently can keep you satiated. It can decrease the volume that you're putting in your stomach at one time. It can give your digestive system a break and it can reduce cravings, particularly nighttime cravings of sugar. I found that things like this fuel for fire can really help decrease the, the nighttime sugar cravings, um, which will ultimately help with sleep, which will help with recovery, helps with metabolism, and then everyone's happy. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any specific questions on nutrition, you can reach out to me. Um, I do, uh, like I said, I do speak to patients about nutrition, um, but I'm not a nutritionist, so I don't do you know advanced diet plans, but I do have people I know that do that if that's what you're interested in. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode for breakfast.